Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on angiodysplasia. Angiodysplasia is the most common vascular abnormality of the gastrointestinal tract. It is caused by the formation of arteriovenous malformations between previously healthy blood vessels. Most commonly in the cecum and ascending colon, it is responsible for approximately 6% of lower GI bleeding cases and up to 8% of upper GI bleeds. Angiodysplasia can be divided into acquired or congenital. Acquired angiodysplasia begins as reduced submucosal venous drainage in the colon, due to chronic and intermittent contraction of the colon, giving rise to dilated and tortuous veins. This results in the loss of precapillary sphincter competency, and in turn causes the formation of small arteriovenous communications, characterized by a small tuft of dilated vessels. Whereas congenital angiodysplasia included causes such as hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, the main features of angiodysplasia are rectal bleeding and anemia. This typically presents in one of three ways. They can be asymptomatic, where it is only diagnosed incidentally during colonoscopy in around 10% of cases, painless occult PR bleeding in majority of cases, and acute hemorrhage in 10 to 15% of cases. As the AV lesions can occur throughout the GI tract, the degree of symptoms will depend upon the location and severity of the malformation. Upper GI lesions present as hematemesis or melena, whereas lower GI lesions, which are more common in angiodysplasia, often present as hematochesia. For investigation, blood tests are ordered as part of the routine assessment for GI bleeding, including a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, liver function test, and coagulation profile. Depending on the clinical picture, a group and save or cross match may be warranted if there is a potential need for transfusion. In patients presenting with symptoms of GI bleeding, it is essential to exclude any malignancy. Patients with occult angiodysplasia will likely receive an upper GI endoscopy or colonoscopy. Depending on the suspected site of bleeding, wireless capsule endoscopy, shown in this picture, is the preferred method to detect bleeding from small bowel. In cases of overt angiodysplastic bleed, mesenteric angiography may be required to confirm the location of a lesion in order to plan for intervention. Angiography can involve either radionuclide scanning, CT scanning, or MRI scanning to image the GI tract vascular supply after the injection of a radio-opaque contrast agent into the vessels. Conservative management. For minimal limited bleeding and hemodynamically stable patient, offer bed rest, IV fluid support, and tranexamic acid. For persistent or severe bleeding cases, we can offer endoscopic therapy or mesenteric angiography. Endoscopy is usually the first line of management, with most widely used technique being argon plasma coagulation. Mesenteric angiography is used for small bowel lesions that cannot be treated endoscopically. This procedure involves super-selective catheterization and embolization of the vessel that has been demonstrated to be bleeding. By extravasation of contrast dye into the bowel lumen from the identified angiotis plastic lesion. This is an endoscopic image during argon plasma coagulation of the angiodysplasia. In a minority of cases, surgical intervention is the only option, whereby a resection and anastomosis of the affected segment of bowel is necessary to limit bleeding. Indications for bowel resection in patients with angiodysplasia are continuation of severe bleeding despite angiographic and endoscopic management, severe acute life-threatening GI bleeding, or multiple angiodysplastic lesions that cannot be treated medically. The complications are re-bleeding post-therapy. Endoscopic techniques have a small risk of bowel perforation, whereas mesenteric angiography has risks of hematoma formation, arterial dissection, thrombosis, and bowel ischemia. That's all for this video. Thank you.